ABA offers a range of strategies for encouraging desirable behavior and reducing unwanted ones. Among these strategies, group contingencies play a pivotal role, especially in settings involving multiple individuals, such as classrooms or therapy groups. Hi, I'm Shira, and together with my partner, Shana, we are How to ABA. We're behavior analysts that create weekly content about how to teach kids with autism so that they make real progress. And we create shareable resources to make your job just a little easier. Today's topic is all about group contingencies. And if you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on new video releases. So a couple of years back when I was still studying for my BCBA, I remember going into one of my children's classrooms and the teacher was explaining a reinforcement system that he had developed in that during the course of a class, he would choose a a secret student and that secret student would determine the reinforcement for the whole class. Nobody would know who that student was, but if that student was found to be attending and doing what he was supposed to be doing, the whole class would get some sort of, you know, point or reward. And at the time, I thought that was so creative. And really what that is, is a group contingency. It is what we would call a a dependent group contingency, which we'll get more into in a little bit. But group contingencies can be really, really effective. Um, What they'll do often is is strengthen the social skills and teamwork amongst a group. It can be very motivating for a group to all be working towards the same goal or to be encouraging each other. Um, It also encourages a lot of peer modeling. Peers can look to one another to know what the expectations are or how to get something that is really desirable. If they see their friend accessing some sort of uh, reward or reinforcement, it makes them want to do the same thing and show the behaviors in the same way. It just encourages you know, a good standard for students and peers to live up to. It's very common in classrooms for teachers to promote positive behavior through group contingency. Um, You can check out some of our other videos on teaching social skills using ACT for other ways to strengthen social skills. And we're going to talk more about what these group contingencies are. So there are three main types of group contingencies. The first one is what we call an independent group contingency. And that's kind of similar to what we're familiar with in terms of reinforcement systems. Everyone has individual responsibility. It can allow for individualized and personalized goals, but each member of that group has a chance to earn a reinforcer based solely on their behavior. So everyone has their own system set up. They could have overlapping goals, but everyone is earning reinforcement at their own rate and for their own goals. So the pro of that is that it really encourages a lot of personal responsibility. It allows for a lot of individualization and customization according to whatever those individual goals are. Um, the con is that it's not really you know, a teamwork type of contingency. The rewards are earned individually. There may be some competition, some other kids might get left behind where they're not meeting expectations as much as some of the other ones and it may make them you know feel a little bit bad or left out but there's definitely a really important time and place for that independent group contingency i find it works really well also for goals that we're working on in some sort of group, you know, for learning a new social skills lesson for the month. We may have um, contingencies around that specific skill, like waiting your turn or um, asking a friend, you know, how they're doing today. And we may have a specific goal and that way everybody can work towards a specific goal that that are overlapping, but in their, at their own pace. The a second kind of group contingency is called dependent group contingency. And that's when, like the name says, the whole reinforcement is dependent on one member. So that means that whether or not the whole class gets the pizza party is going to depend on whether this one student did their homework. Um, so you could already see where like some of the con is that it's a little bit risky. Um, will this student really perform and will the whole class have to really miss out if they don't? Um, it can also lead to some, you know, if they don't perform as they're supposed to, are people going to be resentful? Um, are they going to be upset at that student who lost it for the rest of the class? Um, but if it's done properly, like in the example I gave, you know, in the example I gave, it was, they didn't know who the person was that was chosen. Um, 
And if it can be done properly, then it can really build a supportive environment. They could all be helping that student succeed. If that student has to do their homework for the whole class to get the pizza party, then maybe they all help him with his homework. Um, it really encourages that type of group, teamwork, peer motivation, helping everyone, having one person be successful means everybody can be successful. And that's a really good and important lesson. Um, you can also target some of those, just those individual students who need that little bit of an extra boost of support. Sometimes with reinforcement systems, we end up, um, you know, reinforcing the kids who probably didn't need the reinforcement anyway, because they're already at the top of the class and they always end up accessing the most reinforcement and the kids who probably need the most reinforcement sometimes don't because they see how far behind they are. But with a dependent group contingency, you can choose a student who might be in the middle of that pack or maybe more towards the bottom and really get the rest of the group group to help motivate that learner um, to perform because then everybody wins out. The third type of group contingency is called interdependent group contingency. And that is when the whole group has to meet a certain collective goal to earn the reinforcement. It does foster, you know, a good sense of shared responsibility and unity. Um, the best example of this type of group contingency is the good behavior game. Um, if you haven't checked that out yet, you definitely should. The good behavior game is a research-based approach to classroom behavior management within a group. The way the game works is a teacher picks a certain um, time of the day. It could be done in 10 minute intervals or 30 minute intervals and they divide the class into two teams and during that time when a team shows any um bad behavior however that's defined for that class they would get um a tally or a point and the team uh, out of those two with the least amount of points at the end of the interval wins something for their team. So it's not that one person's winning. Um, it's really the whole team has to perform in order for the whole team to access some sort of contingency. So the, the nice thing is that it does enhance teamwork and that collective effort. Every, everyone is motivated. You don't lose just because of one person and only one person doesn't win. The whole group can win and the whole group can lose. Um, the con is that there could always be that one person in the group who is making it in making everybody lose. So if the class is divided into two, for example, and they keep getting bad behavior points because of one student and that peer pressure isn't really working for that one student to behave better, um, then it might result in, you know, a little bit of resentment towards that one student. But if everyone can be socially motivated towards working towards a common goal, then it can work really well in a classroom. For more information on group contingencies, click the link on or around this video or in the description to claim your free group data sheet. We also encourage you to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos and leave a like and comment below if you have further questions.